Hello and welcome to the screencast where we're going to do a little bit more command line plotting in MATLAB, this time with a little more complicated example. Here's the function I'm going to work with this time. This function will actually trace out the bell curve or the normal distribution, which is a very commonly used curve in statistics and probability. It's called a two-parameter family of curves because there's one variable, x, and then there are these two what are called parameters, a and b. If I were going to try to graph f of x or use it in some sort of situation, I would choose values for a and for b, and then I, that would give me one kind of curve. And I might choose again for another value of a and another value of b, and that would give me another member of the family of curves. And what I might want to use MATLAB to explore here is to see what graphical effect does the value of a have, and what graphical effect does the value of b have. And so I'm going to plan this out. First of all, I think I would like to create a one by two subplot here. This would create a grid of plots that's got one row with two graphs in it. The first one that's going to appear on the left, I'm going to set b equal to one. That's the thing I'm dividing by in the formula. And then I'm going to plot f of x using several values of a. And in the right hand one, what's going to be in the two position in my subplot, I'm going to set a equal to zero. a is the thing that I'm subtracting from the x. And then plot f of x using several values of b. And this will help me understand from a graphical perspective in an easy to visualize way what effect those two parameters have. And uh, we'll like to probably need to add a legend on each plot to show the different parameter values. And then whatever helps me improve the informational value of my plot, grids, color changes, style changes, whatever the case may be, we'll add those in as needed. So let's go over to MATLAB and make it happen. So over here in MATLAB, I have an M file created where I'm going to do all my plotting. Right now, there's only two lines of code. Let me explain them. The first one here is, says close all. This is a handy command if you're creating an M file that produces graphs. The first thing that will, when you execute close all, the first thing that happens when this M file is played is it will close all the open figure windows. And so if you have a bunch of graphs open, this won't add to the problem. It'll keep your desktop nice and clean. And so in the second line, obviously, X is uh, defined to be lens space negative 5 to 5. That ends up not being a good choice for x, I can always go back and change it. So in the left hand subplot for this in my plan, I wanted to set b equal to 1 in my formula and then plot uh, several different graphs using different values of a. Let's create some different y's for that. Let's let y1 equal, um, it would be e, xp, e, xp, to the negative, and let's set uh, a equal to 1 to begin with. So x minus 1 quantity squared, and that's a vector inside that um, uh, parenthesis there, so I do need to use element wise squaring. And, and all these I'm going to be dividing by 1, so I don't actually need to put divided by 1 here. That's enough. And just to remind myself later, I'll put a comment up here that says a equals 1. And let's put a few more y's in here. y2, let's set, uh, for this one, let's set a equal to 0. So that would be uh, e to the negative x minus 0 squared divided by 1. And go up here, and I need to. Uh, if I don't want that to echo to the screen, I need to put a semicolon at the end. Finally, let's let um, a equal negative one equals uh, negative one, and that will be let's call it y three, and that's uh, e to the negative parenthesis x minus negative one. So it'll be x plus one quantity squared. Okay. Now I can plot all three of these on the same set of axes. Uh, but what I need to do first is create my subplot. Uh, so let's create do subplot, and this is a one row, two column subplot, and I want to focus in on the first position there. So I'll create the plot. Now let's plot all these uh, y's at once. x, y, 1, comma, x, y, 2, comma, x, y, 3. And if I execute the plot right now, what I'm going to get is a simple plot. Okay, there it is. The, it's in the right place, and there are my three little bell curves. Now, what I think I might want to do next is perhaps um, put a legend on here so I can tell these guys apart. It's pretty hard to tell which one's which. So we're going to add a legend. And this legend's going to have three items in it, um, and I'm going to pass it three string values for the labels. The first string value, it's going to go in the order in which I plotted. So the first thing that I plotted was the A equals 1 case. So I'm going to label that item in the legend with A equals 1. The second one was a equals zero, and the third one was a equals negative one. These are all strings. Now if I re-execute, uh, see I get the plot and my legends in there. It kind of obscures the uh, graphs here. There's almost no place to put it where it won't, so I'll just leave it as it is. Now you can really easily tell which one belongs to which a. Finally, uh, just a few aesthetic things. I'm going to add the grid, so grid on. Um, maybe add a title. Let's put a title um, b equal to one different values of A. And let's re-execute and see how it's looking. 
pretty good. I think one last thing I might do is add more x ticks. So let's make the x ticks. That's set to get the current axis, and I am setting the x tick, capital X, capital T, with single quotes, and I need to feed it a vector. Let's put the x ticks every one unit here instead of every five units. So starting at negative five, stepping by one, and ending at five. And once I re execute all that stuff, here's what I get. And that's a pretty good plot. I don't think I'll leave it at that. Now let's work on that right-handed subplot where I'm setting a equal to zero and using different values of b. Just to save some time, there's a lot of similarities to the first part of this. I've just added the code in already. I'll just point it out line by line what happens. The subplot 1, 2, 2 uh, keeps the 1 by 2 subplot but now shifts the focus to position 2, which is where I want all this other stuff to go. The next uh, three lines down here uh, are just defining three new functions, one with b equal to 1, b equal to 3, b equal to a third. Now the plotting actually happens down here in line 42 of this m file. And you can see I've added a couple of little style changes here. I wanted Y4 to be a dashed blue line, Y5, the uh, B equals 3 case, to be a dashed red line, and Y6, the B equals 1 third case, to be a dashed green line. I've added a legend, and additionally, I've, I've directed the legend to be in the best possible location with these two uh, uh, options here. Add a title, same grid on, same set, the X ticks. So now let's execute this again, and I should be looking at a very nice graph here with uh, the different values of A here, the different values of B here, and you can really easily see at a glance what the effect is of those two parameters. The A shifts the bell curve left and right, the B compresses it horizontally. Now the one last thing I think would be cool to do is publish this M file and to see how it looks. So I have my M file, I'm not gonna do anything else to it, and just go to publish this M file right here. It'll run through the process, and once it renders the plots, like so, and there's another one coming up, like so. It'll automatically spit out the HTML in a little mini web browser that lives in MATLAB, and you can see uh, here's the contents, and it, the comments show up, the, the section headings show up, the comments show up in line, and every time I run the code, the graphical values show up. So I could then take this HTML and publish it to the web. So that's a slightly more complicated example, still not too bad, uh, of how you can make some pretty sophisticated plots and publish them using MATLAB's M-File system and from the command line. Thanks for watching.